Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. 2024 as well as 2025 will have absolutely no shortage of awesome products if you are a PC gamer. For GPUs, we have the RTX 50 series of cards that will, of course, start to trickle out. We have RDNA 4, RDNA 5, uh, Intel's Battle Mage, and for the CPU side of things, which will be the focus of today's video, both Intel's Arrow Lake as well as Zen 5. And it does seem to be almost confirmed at this point that Arrow Lake will not support hyper-threading and AVX 512 will also be gone. There are some other very interesting things that we have learned courtesy of some leaks that have popped up over the past 24 or so hours and we're going to be talking about both Arrow Lake and Ryzen right after this quick message from the sponsor of the video. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So on the 1851 socket this year, Intel will be introducing us to their Arrow Lake processors. Formerly known by most as the 15th generation CPUs, Intel of course are doing kind of like a rename scheme for its processors. So these do seem to be, at least according to leaks and other bits and pieces, uh, essentially destined to be called the Core Ultra 200 series. You can let me know in the comments down below whether you prefer that naming scheme or the 15th, 16th and so on generation. Personally, I'm still at the moment anyway, a fan of the older naming scheme. Just honestly, I just am familiar with it, but I don't think it's going to be a big deal. Like it's not like I hate the new naming scheme. It's initially, I didn't like it as much. I will admit, but I think it's going to be fine. I think Intel have had like a billion different naming schemes at this point. You know, we had what the 386, the 486, the Pentiums, uh, you know, oh God, like the core processors, like the core two duos and the quads and, you know, the I processors and you get the idea. You can, you know, <laughs> you can do a written history down below if you so desire. But yeah, I think it's going to be absolutely fine. Most people are just going to buy a pre-built. Let's just be honest. And for those who are interested in tech, you're going to know the naming schemes and figure out what is the best processor and best value for money within like 10 seconds. So I'm sure most of you, it's probably not going to be that big of a deal. Um, but anyway, yeah, these processors, as I said, will be on the 1851 socket, which is contrary to what AMD are doing, at least with Zen 5. And I've also heard Zen 6 as well. They will be sticking on the AM5 platform. But of course, um, AMD have only just kind of recently introduced AM5 anyway. So, yeah. But anyway, um, so there have been a lot of rumors that hyper-threading will be gone with Arrow Lake. This is certainly not the first time that we've heard this. However, Momomo on Twitter has made a couple of interesting discoveries. So the Core Ultra 200 has had at least a couple of different SKUs leaked. They are both engineering samples, albeit very early engineering samples, just to be very clear. And you will notice here that uh, it is actually referencing the Meteor Lake platform because basically the platform name is the same for both Meteor Lake and Arrow Lake. Or should I say the Arrow Lake processor using the Meteor Lake platform, if you prefer. Obviously, initially we were going to receive Meteor Lake CPUs on the client, or should I say desktop, but that didn't happen. But basically the uh, platform name is still, well, the thing. Anyway, 20 cores, 20 threads at 2.3 gigahertz, and then we have the same frequency, roughly speaking. However, the number of cores and number of threads has gone up. So we're looking at 24 and 24 respectively. Respectively, wow, I butchered that word. Anyway, so basically these processors are going to be 8 slash 16, but again, because of the fact that there is no hyper threading, the thread count is identical, of course, to the core count. So yeah, I don't exactly 100% know, honestly, why hyper threading is being removed. I've heard a lot of different theories and several different leaks, but I honestly don't 100% know what is true. 
Um, I think it's probably a fact of, uh, well, sorry, or should I say a combination of different things, I think. They probably didn't feel that hyper-threading was that much more performant in a lot of different tasks. Um, I've also heard there were some security concerns that were being floated around, and this is particularly true in the data center side of things. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see whether this gets reversed or not in the long-term future, but at least for now anyway, um, it's not going to be there. As for longer term, Arrow Lake will be almost certainly receiving a refresh, and basically with the refresh, it's going to increase the number of e-cores, so it seems like it's going to be 8 slash 32. The rumor was, and I'd heard the same thing, that, uh, the the earlier plans were to release like the 32 e core version kind of earlier but they didn't and i heard it was for multiple different reasons including things like power delivery and some other bits and pieces but ultimately it seems that that is going to be happening in a refresh um i saw some classified intel documents basically i can't show them because it would just be like really bad because they're watermarked and you can really easily tell <laughs> their source so i can't show them unfortunately i wish i could but yeah i it's it's a youtube video i don't want to get anyone into trouble just for a youtube video it's just yeah it's not good but anyway yeah if the documents are believed and i do think they are genuine and this is quite a while ago i received them i can't remember exactly when but i think it's like mid or like maybe q3 last year uh basically speaking it seemed that uh it was like a power delivery concern and yeah they just <sighs> It, it, basically, it seems that they're kind of doing a refresh. So it'll be very interesting to see how well these processes perform. The rumor is an Igor's lab uh, leaked some classified internal documents, or should I say, at the very least, the results of them. And it seems that those numbers are pretty reasonably accurate. Um, I've heard that the IPC gains are pretty much in line with this. I'll probably do another video in maybe a couple of days' time as I'm just trying to double-check a couple of IPC numbers. But roughly speaking, I've heard between 10 and 20% IPC gain um, from one generation to another. However, that does the numbers slightly differ depending on the source and also whether we're talking single and multi-thread. As for clock frequency, these obviously were early engineering samples. We, you know, we're not looking at even three gigahertz for some of these numbers here. But um, I have been told that you know the later samples they are probably aiming for around 5.5-ish gigahertz, give or take, like a couple of hundred megahertz one way or the other. So they should be relatively performant. The problem is. There's still a lot of, uh, let's just say mixed information to see how the next generation Ryzen, Ryzen 9000, will perform. So it's going to be interesting to see benchmark by benchmark, case by case basis, to see how well one does and how well another does. Uh, with different, you know, different workloads, integer, floating point. And obviously, just to see how different scenarios in terms of like you know applications which love a lot of memory bandwidth and so forth are gonna perform against one against the other speaking of granite ridge though just a quick update so a few days ago i did cover a ryzen 9000 story okay granite ridge and that was basically hxl on twitter discovered in uh in uh, chipset drivers essentially support for the next generation of ryzen processors there wasn't exactly a ton of information in the update it's not like it gave us like you know core counts the performance and all that stuff but it did basically just say yeah these are coming, and uh, obviously it was essentially confirmation from AMD that they are readying, you know, the launch of a new piece of hardware. As when you start to see these things, you know, emerging, you can say, okay, well, that means that the processors are getting closer and closer to launch because it's not like they're going to start putting this into like a Gisa versions of more BIOS, should I say, uh, you know, like two years before the processors are going to launch, obviously. Anyway, uh, after that, we saw, I believe it was Asus as well, um, pretty much do the same thing with one of their boards. And again, it's not like they gave us full specification rundown of what we can expect for the, I don't know what they're going to be called. I'm assuming it's going to be the Ryzen 9000 series. That's what I've kind of been told anyway. And now MSI are getting in on the act. Once again, uh, HXL has been doing some digging and we have for the... Um, What's the board number? The B650 Carbon Wi-Fi. We see a, 
a Gisa Combo P1.1.7.0 patch A updated for next generation CPUs. And again, it's not calling out the processors specifically by name, but it's not very difficult to be like, well, I wonder what these can be for. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see how these actually perform. Again, I've heard so many different IPC numbers for the next generation Ryzen processors. And obviously, it's not just uh, IPC gains. It's also, you know, how that relates to clocks as well. Um, you know, as I've read a hundred times at this point, I've heard everything from like high teens in terms of IPC gains to like 30, 35%. Honestly, do not know what is correct. Um, because I have a bunch of sources. Each source is basically swearing that their information is 100% correct and they've all had really good info before. So these are not people who have just like, you know, randomly messaged me. These are people who have sent me information that has been true before and each one is swearing that their IPC numbers are correct. So my guess is there's probably some misinformation that's floating around. I also suspect it's probably going to be down to the workloads a little bit. And it could also be things like theoretical numbers versus what is achievable in the real world. And then you've got like very interesting scenarios like the fact that uh, Granite Ridge may just simply perform differently to the server processors in terms of IPC because of a number of different things, like for example, bandwidth. So I'm gonna be very interested to see what is actually legitimate in terms of IPC gains. Again, as I've said a hundred times at this point, I'm kind of bracing myself for the worst, like 15 to 20%, because that's typical for a processor's generation to generation. But again, I'm being told by a lot of people that that is really underselling the CPU. So it's going to be very interesting. You've also had others that are saying very high numbers as well, like Kepler L2. I don't remember if it was 30 or 40% he stated in terms of integer performance. I'll say it was 30, but it might have been 40. I don't want to misquote him, so I'll just say it was 30%. So it's going to be very interesting to see how these processes actually perform, as well as, of course, competing against uh, Arrow Lake. With that said, guys, uh, one last very small thing I just want to cover, just for the sake of uh, completion sake, because a couple of people uh, wrote to me. So Tom Warren um, from The Verge, he's not saying any new information here. But regarding the PS5 Pro, he essentially confirmed the clock frequency of the uh, um, CPU and GPU. He basically says it's like 10% extra, assuming they go for the CPU performance option uh, as developers. And uh, basically that, of course, the system essentially at this point... All the information that we seem to have had has been confirmed now by multiple different people. I will be very curious to see how Sony markets this console. And also, I will be very interested to see what the reception is of this pro of this thing. This is a very dumb... <laughs> this is like perhaps the dumbest take in the history of humanity. But I either think this console is going to be very, very well received... Or it's like not going to interest people. I think it could be like... You know, Marmite, if you're British, you'll know what I mean by that. It's like, yeah. Um, personally speaking, I'm actually quite interested in the console. I think it's definitely going to be the best way to play PlayStation games. So, you know, if you're interested in the PlayStation ecosystem. However, I also do understand people who perhaps already own a PS5 are like, eh, eh, is it worth it? Well, as always we're gonna to have to wait for an official reveal so i'll be curious to see what mark cerny actually reveals about the console it'll also be interesting and uh, i just thought of this off the fly so i'll just quickly say this i'll be interested if they do a road to ps5 pro video or whatever it ends up being called whether they actually reveal more about the ps5 because while we know a lot about the ps5 in terms of like kind of what they did and there have been a lot of leaks, like the cut um, FP units, for example, on the CPU. We also have a lot of stuff that is not confirmed, guesswork, and also a lot of questions. So I'll be interested to see whether they end up doing like a, a like a deep dive in the PS5 Pro, which just from the very nature of talking about the PS5 Pro, whether they reveal more about the PS5. I don't know. I'll be interested to see what happens with that. Anyway, with that said, take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.